Minerva's Medical Device PLM Risk Management Medical device makers have to comply with FDA and ISO regulations. These regulations include CFR Part 820, Part 11, as well as ISO 13485 and ISO 14971 for risk management. PLM can enable compliance to these regulations in the area of record control, corrective and preventative actions, CAPAs, design control with device uh, with design history files, and material control. This presentation focuses on risk management as part of design control. The goal of risk management is the systematic application of policies, procedures, and practices to the task of analyzing and evaluating and controlling risk. The word systematic is important, meaning that it must be defined and deliberate. This is not an ad hoc process. The FDA does not detail the process of risk management, but has pointed to the use of ISO 14971. There is a close relationship from risk management to design control, in particular to design inputs, outputs, and verifications. For example, identification of a hazard will feed into a design input and mitigation of a harm. Risk control may result in a product change via an engineering change order. ISO 14971 requires companies top management to establish a risk management policy. This policy includes risk management planning, risk analysis, risk evaluations, risk control, acceptability of residual risk, risk management reporting, and the device production and post-production information as it relates to risk. The risk assessment is a process comprising of risk analysis and risk evaluation. The risk analysis uses available information to identify hazards and estimates the risk. When starting risk analysis, use the intended use statement of the device. Keep in mind there may be risk from the device, devices intended and unintended misuses as well. Keep this point in mind since the safety features of the device will be used to feed the design inputs. Hazards are potential sources of harm. ISO 14971 Annex E names a few examples of hazards such as electromagnetic energy, thermal energy or heat, mechanical energy such as gravity or vibrations and motion, biological, bacteria and viruses. A hazardous situation is a circumstance where people or property is exposed to a hazard. The combination of a hazard, its situation can result in one or more harms. For every harm, a risk estimate needs to be performed. The risk is evaluated on severity of the harm and the likelihood of occurrence. To complete the risk assessment, a risk evaluation is performed. The evaluation process and criteria as well as what constitutes an acceptable risk needs to be documented as part of the overall risk management plan. Typical practice is to assign a number to severity and occurrence and multiply them together for a risk number. The risk number is compared to the risk chart and would classify the risk as high, medium, or low. Typically, all high and medium risks need to be addressed with risk controls. Risk control is all about the measures that can be taken to reduce the risk. As you remember, risk is the severity times the likelihood of occurrence. Typically, the severity number is weighed higher in the formula. To reduce the risk, we must either reduce the likelihood of occurrence or the severity. Severity is difficult to reduce since it is typically inherent to the device. It is hard to reduce the severity of a knife if its function is to cut. For this reason, most, most risk control is done on the occurrence. Controlling a risk should be done in accordance of priority to 1. Inherent safety by design, 
This means designing safety into the device. Two, protective measures and three, labels and instructions. As you can see, all these three risk controls feed design inputs and, be, and will be manifested in the design, design output as part of the design control. As with most things, the full elimination of risk is not possible. The process of residual risk acceptability is a process of weighing the risk to the benefit. The process, the criteria, and standards need to be approved and documented as part of the risk management plan. The European version of ISO 14971 call for risk to be reduced as much as possible. Reports on risks need to be collected. Since risk reduction is an ongoing process, the risk reports should be treated under configuration control with sign-offs and versions. Risk needs to be managed as an ongoing process throughout the entire product lifecycle. For this reason, it is important to identify what can feed the risk process, such as CAPAs, incidents, and problem reports, as well as the way risk controls can be implemented. Typical industry practices around risk management is the use of Microsoft Office documents. For risk management plans, Word documents and document templates are used to identify processes, sign-offs, and are then published to document management system or corporate intranets like SharePoint. For risk assessment and control, the use of Excel spreadsheets to identify hazards, their situations and harms, and what has been done to mitigate is predominant. We can see more of the same for risk acceptance reports and post-production tracking. Many of these processes are manual with business objects lacking relationship to the Excel spreadsheet document, making the systematic reduction of risk difficult or error prone. Unfortunately, this is the landscape of many companies, file systems, spreadsheets, and silo systems. Anyone can easily see the inefficiencies, data duplication, and lack of traceability and opportunity for error. This is a picture of a difficult risk management system. Minerva's medical device PLM running on Innovator can be used for risk management to improve design control. PLM can be used as a risk management framework. As part of the larger solution, few elements are shown here, the design history file and the risk assessment and control. The structures of a DHF are created as templates. Deliverables are defined for a device. The deliverables can include templates for risk management plans, as well as risk acceptance and evaluation criteria, among others. Each deliverable is then mapped to a location to a DHF, along with a rule that states when the deliverable is complete. This can be based on a workflow completion such as a release, user action, or phase gate completion. The combination of these two items allow the DHF to be created automatically as a result of users' work. Baselines, complete DHF structures are created as a result of any change to a project or deliverable as well as a completion of a phase gate. The risk assessment and control is presented in a unified view. It utilizes the content modeling framework in an Excel-like format to relate the hazards, harms, and their risk to the risk control. The key differentiator to Excel spreadsheet is that the risk assessment is a structured document with relationship to innovator business objects. As the business object change, the risk assessment can receive alerts and updates. For example, when a problem report is created, it can be linked to a harm. In order to reduce this harm, an engineering change can be created from the risk assessment control document and tracked to, implement, to implementation, reducing the harm's overall risk with a new severity or occurrence. This is a summary of the DHF and the DMR in the medical device solution. 
Template structures are created for a DHF and DMR. Deliverables and their corresponding closing rules, as well as where they will be placed in DHF and a DMR are created. A project is used to instantiate the deliverables, and as work completes under the deliverables, they are automatically placed in the DHF and the DMR. When looking at the device as a product, the DHF and the DMR can be reviewed. This is a depiction of how risk management is modeled as a structured document in the content modeling framework of Innovator. A hazard and a hazardous situation can have many harms. Innovator business objects like problem reports, documents, FMEAs can be linked to a harm. A hazard can have one or more risk controls and recommendations. A control can be represented as a test specification of Innovator while the recommendation can be an engineering change, requirement, part, document, or a test specification. For example, a hazard of electromagnetic energy is identified. A problem report comes in stating that a circuit board has failed due to electrical shock. One of the harms identified is the patient will get wrong amounts of medication by overdose or underdose. To mitigate the risk, an engineering change has been issued to use electric, electrical shock resistant boards. This engineering change is linked to the recommendation and can be tracked to implementation. If you would like to know more or would like a product demonstration, contact Minerva at the below address.